Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video. Welcome back. Uh, my ears are a bit crazy at the moment. We're in lockdown, so everything's closed. Uh, so just bear with me. Um, but that's not what this video is about. It's not about my hair. It's about the drone we made as a community on our live stream. So the, I'm going to start a series where I break it into smaller pieces. Uh, so talking about the schematic, talking about the PCB, uh, the programming, the 3D print, everything. So the PCB we designed was like this. It's a nice little small PCB with the ESP32, the MPU 650 motor controllers. So this video is the start of the series. So this is part one where I'm going to break it down. So I'm going to talk about the schematic, what we did in the schematic, all the components we used, why we used it, what type of things you have to look out for, mistakes I made, um, and then the PCB routing wise, uh, what to focus on, uh, the component placement. So this video is about that and then the next video will be about how to assemble it together, how to upload the program, how to build the drone, maybe another part three. So I'm going to really, really try to break it into simple pieces and it's really for beginners. So when I explain about a MOSFET, it's not technical detail. It's poor signal high, the MOSFET closes like a switch. So I really want this for any beginner out there to just understand the concept, to understand how easy it is to actually build something. Just a disclaimer, I am not a drone expert. I know nothing about drones. This is just me with the community trying to build something I have no idea about. So I know about PC design, but I do not know about drones. Um, so yeah, so just enjoy this, uh, learn with me. Uh, until next guy, time guys, and uh, let me know what you guys think, what you guys want us to work on. Uh, we have a lot of tutorials on KiCad, Altium, things like that. Um, so just enjoy it. Uh, until the next video guys, uh, if you like it, like, subscribe, you know the drill. Uh, until next time, sit back, enjoy, let's pull the drone. Let's get started. So I'm going to break this video up in different sections, uh, speaking about the PCB, speaking about the schematic and breaking each part in sections so I can explain what it's all purposes are for. But because all our stuff's open source, um, you can download this files of the PCB from our GitHub uh, Respiratory, I think it's called. <laughs> the first time I'm using GitHub, to be honest with you. Uh, to do that, you can just go to our Discord page, and in the PCB Design tab, you can go to Pin Messages, uh, click here, Plum Pot 55 PCB Designs. Uh, I guess you can also go just to the link, but it'll be very cool if you guys join our Discord. Uh, we've got 120 people now at the moment. Uh, it's easier for me to help you as well if there's any questions. It's more one-to-one, -one, more personal. And there's also other engineers on there that can help you. So to download the drone, you just have to go to code, download zip. Uh, so there's other PCB designs also we've done, like the macro keyboard, the battery charger. Uh, so when you download the zip, you're going to get all these PCBs. So just download it, and then you can extract it like this and open the file. So let's get talking about the schematic. When I design my schematics, I normally break my schematics in different sections, as you can see here. The ESP32, the CP2104, voltage regulator, accelerometer, MOSFET motor drivers, and then just the motor connectors. So the IC I chose was the ESP32. Uh, reason being is I've used it for other projects as well, and I like the fact that I've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities on this chip. Because to fly the drone, I'm thinking about making an app on the phone and use the phone to fly the drone. That's the reason why we chose ESP32. Uh, it's good value for a Bluetooth Wi-Fi chip. CP2104 is the USB to serial converter. It's a very stable IC. Also, uh, just a preference. I've used it in projects. I'm happy with it. So basically what it does is it just takes your USB and then it allows you to program your ESP32 uh, with the TX and RX. So you guys have seen many times that when you buy ESP32 dev board, you get those two buttons at the bottom. I'll put a picture here uh, that enables and boot. So you have to push that in a certain way to upload a program to your ESP32. But you can also add transistors like this to allow it for automatic upload. So this IC has RTS DTR and those will toggle a certain way to let your ESP32 know that you can program to it. It, it. it puts in a programming mode, a boot mode, whatever you would like to call it. So that's very cool for automatic. Otherwise, you have to manually pull the GPI open, reset pin to a certain state. And then we always have our decoupling capacitors. 
the ESP32 runs on a 3 volt 3 voltage regulator. So we just had a nice converter. Uh, you guys can actually use any one. So I just chose the MIC5219. Um, just again, has just been in previous projects, I reuse circuits. So as my voltage takes my battery, my LiPo battery, 3.7 volts to 4.2 volts, and just converts it to a nice stable 3.3 volts. On the left hand side, you can just see a connector where I'm going to solder the motors onto. So the motors I chose was brush motors, 8, 850 I think. Um, so it's nice, easy home DIY motors, high RPMs, uh, can handle the voltage we're going to output. To drive the motors, we just made use of simple MOSFETs. Uh, we're going to PWM the signal. So if you don't know what a MOSFET is, it's basically just a, f a nice switch. So when we pull the signal up, it, uh, the switch closes and there's current flowing through it. Uh, this is an NPN MOSFET. So that just means a high here on this line will open this, cause a short. So what happens is I will PWM this. PWMs are just nice little waves. I'll put a picture here. Um, so it's just a nice wave that you change the duty cycle of your signal to change the speed of the motor. So I'm basically switching this on either very fast or open, close, open, close, and that will change the speed of the motor. Uh, more about it later. And then I just need a accelerometer, the MPU650. It's a nice generic one that's used in many drones out there. So this will just sense my roll, my pitch, um, yeah, in which state my drone is. So I will tr use PID to try to keep it stable. I will speak more about PID and programming later in another video. I really want to break this down into sections. So those are the components that I'm currently going to use on my drone. Just some advice that um, talking about the different ICs and different. So here you can see I've got my reset. I should actually, it's a better practice to also have a capacitor here to ground uh, to keep the reset nice and stable. So that is missing here. Uh, so this button actually just, when I ground my reset, your processor just kind of reboots. So if you have a stuck in a certain loop of a while loop in your code and your processor is not responding, then you can just push a button and the processor will reset. And then I just want to measure my battery. The ESP32 can only handle uh, voltage input of about 3.3 volts. Um, so, but my VBAT is about 3.7 to 4.2 volts. So I need to have a voltage divider to be able to measure the voltage. I can't connect my VBAT directly to my pin. So I have two 100K resistors. So this means just my voltage will be divided by two. So in my code, I can say if I measure 2.1 volts, it's actually 4.2 volts. Uh, I2C most of the time, or always, should have pull-up resistors. Uh, it's just part of the communication protocol. You guys can read more about that. So it's also good practice to have uh, just resistors in series with your TX and RX. But I do this for another reason. I like to label my TX and RX so I don't forget because what happens sometimes is we get this TX and RX as engineers mixed up a lot. I don't care who you are, we've all done it. <laughs> so there's different ways of uh, trying to solve that. I like to name it such a way that's TX from my CPU to my RX from my ESP. Because your TX should always go to RX, right? So when you transmit, this one transmits, it needs to go to the receive side of it. And when this transmits, it needs to go to the RX side of it. So this just this naming makes it a bit easier to understand. Also, if by chance I still mix up these two, I can move the resistors and just create a nice little short and fix my mistakes. Yeah, I just this is uh, addresses. So if you have more than one um, I, one device on the ISQC bus, then you can configure a certain way with addresses. I just added this for future use. So this is not popular at the moment. Uh, don't populate it because you'll cause a short from three volts to ground and it won't work. And here you can see a scotchy diode. So the reason behind this is a motor is actually a generator as well. So when a motor turns, it actually sends electricity, you can call it, back to the system. So this is just protecting it from that, from that feedback. Uh, so this makes the motor turn 
but a motor turning also causes like let's keep it simple electricity so that's what a generator is right it's a motor that turns and gives back to the system so we don't want those two sides fighting with each other um, that's a very simple explanation but I don't want to get too much detail about that so it's just good practice to have a scotchy diet like that uh, pull out pres pull down resistor here um, like the MPN to pull it up uh, you close it you close the switch so we have a pull down resistor of 10k so when there's no signal on this line it makes sure that my MOSFET is open so there's no floating it's not in an unknown state so either it's open or closed so when I remove this this line is sometimes floating so it can be in that uh, unknown range so we are just controlling our known state of it's grounded it is open hope that makes sense going through the circuit now you, you as as you'll notice when designing more PCBs uh, you always spot some small mistakes you might have made or yeah just stuff you could have done better so just quickly yeah this 100 ohm resistor is quite low never have a pull up resistor that low um, so I did fix it because when I get the boards I can populate my own uh, resistors on but this should at least be 10k uh, don't make it so low and also your PWM signals have to be on pins that are PWM capable so not all pins in the ESP32 can be PWM um, so just look at the data sheet make sure that the pins you use are capable of PWM so let's look at the PCB um, so there are some improvements I could have made for this so I think that's another video about how to optimize your PCB uh, the best way of routing things like that so I did make some mistakes but I'll make another video about that functionally it works but stuff I could have done to make it less susceptible to EMC EMI uh, but that's another video I just want to talk about some basic things like the ESP32 it's always good practice to have it on the edge of the board because with the antenna you don't want anything running at the bottom of it uh, you can have it the, in the middle of the board but then sometimes you want to cut out here uh, but best practice just keep on the edge look at the data sheet it will also tell you where to connect it where to place it uh, so just I've got four connectors or holes where I'm going to solder my wires my motors on uh, my battery will be there I program it uh, you can see my CP2103 is at the bottom on the green layer there's my CP2103 D plus D minus are differential pairs um, it is actually a quite slow so it's not too critical if it's not um, also just a good practice is make your differential pairs as short as possible so try to keep your cp2104 as close as possible to usb uh, don't have it there at the end somewhere and then you just make your differential pair tracks very long um, i placed my my accelerometer my mpu right in the center of the board so the idea is that i only have one so i would like this to be in the center when it rotates x y z then i don't have to have so much correction factors if you understand what i'm trying to say uh, because when it's flat it's my zero position it's perfect in the middle and like i mentioned earlier i am not a drone expert so it's just a good feeling that i think it should be in the middle um, so please let me know in the bottom if the middle is actually not a good place but logically for me it just made sense to put it in the middle so you can see also see these tracks are a bit thicker so power tracks are normally uh, much thicker than the rest um, so when you have high voltage high current this is not high voltage but the current can get quite high i think one to two amps so current the track thickness is a good indicator of how much you can handle current wise when the voltage increases then your clearance is important so this gap the higher the voltage the more likely it can jump across tracks so current is copper thickness and voltage is clearance or creepage so those are two terms that you can google learn about so current track thickness voltage clearance creepage great so that is our part one of our building our drone i'm going to create short um, shorter videos just breaking into different parts because i really want to explain just basic concepts and why we chose certain stuff so we did do this a live stream online so those videos are available but it's three four hour watching 
uh, where we did this community got input from the community so it's really a community project in the next video i will show you guys the pcb that we ordered how it looks how small it is actually this doesn't do it justice and then the housing or um, body of the drone is actually 3d printed and we're going to go into that how we're going to mount it i've got the motors and then later on part three part four we'll talk about programming making the app so this is going to be a series of smaller videos so that we all can build this drone as i told you guys open source if there's any questions about it please guys let us know in the comment below uh, let us know in discord if you like this video please like and subscribe all that great stuff i really love speaking to new people learning about you guys ah, it's been amazing so far uh, have a fantastic day until the next video bye